Hi, it's my pleasure to introduce today uh, Chrissy Blair and Bridget Shawman, who are both um, from uh, the National Library's Services to Schools, and they are going to share with us the work that's been going on um, under the community of readers, um, um, Putoi Rito, that's um, being done by the National Library. It's been going on over a period of time, and we're very pleased to share um, their work in the last issue of Library Life, and I'll put the link into that for you in case you haven't seen that, um, that article. And we also had a presentation at the Lianza Conference last year, which was wonderful, but we were very keen to learn more about uh, what the project's been doing, what's ahead, and some of the wonderful things that have been achieved, some of the outcomes, some of the ways in which communities have engaged with the communities of readers. So without further ado, I will hand over to Chrissy and Bridget and they will take it away. Thank you very much. So I'm going to start, I'll firstly start by sharing my screen. Let's hope that it all goes swimmingly. And hopefully that's all good. And I'll just disappear this one. Um, so Kia ora, everybody. It's lovely to see you there. Lots of familiar faces, um, which is slightly terrifying. Um, so, um, tēnā koutou katoa. Ko Bridget Shawman, tōko ingoa. Ko kōpuai tōku karanga maunga. Ko mata au tōku awa maunga. He otipoti a ahu e oho ana. So, I am Bridget Shawman. And I'm based, I'm a facilitator for, for services to schools and I'm based in Dunedin and I work right across Central Otago and North Otago and I work on the southern side of Dunedin, which is the side that my project is, that, that I work on is based, it's not my project. Um, so I um, am a little bit of a reading evangelist, um, some of you might recognise that facet of my personality. And I've lived uh, in South Dunedin for a very long time, went to school here even. And previous to this job, I worked in a large secondary boys school in South D. Um, and I was there for 17 years before I came to this job that I'm currently doing and loving. So Chrissy is my lovely colleague who's here with me. And so, and Emma Smolden is doing us the big favor of sharing some links in the chat which is great, and thank you, Emma. So she'll do that as we talk, and I will get started. So, for some time, the National Library has had, um, has, has had the dream, really, that New Zealand becomes a nation of readers. And with that goal in mind, and knowing that the nation is made up of communities, we've been working in Putoirito Communities of Readers, or CORE, as we call it, a national library initiative that aims to engage children and young people with reading for pleasure and well-being. Um, it's funded by the Tapuna Foundation and in collaboration with lots of partners and all the different projects, um, the initiative works with communities to design and develop and deliver support for reading engagement. So there's research attached to every project, there are resources developed, stories and tools generated during, during in each of the projects, and the learnings will help shape future work and, and including to the strategy of growing a nation of readers. So Chrissy and I are going to talk about three projects that we've been involved in, and also a little bit about one of the other projects that's ongoing in Canterbury. So I'm going to talk about um, Read, Share, Grow. So since the beginning of 2020, I've been working on the South Dunedin community project, which is called Read, Share, Grow. There are a bunch of stakeholders, uh, and the idea is to promote reading and inspire children and Fano to read for pleasure. Read Share Grow is not a reading is good for you project. It's all about the joy, the pleasure, the feeling of wellness and warmth that you get when you share stories with little children. And it's about providing gorgeous books to a very large community. So when I say large community, I'm talking about multiple suburbs. Um, and if you don't know Dunedin, this probably won't help you, but so we go from Tainui across to Concord via St Kilda, South Dunedin, Musselburgh, St Clair, Carisbrook and Corstepin. Our mission is, is to, and there's an, 
our mission is on the slide, sorry. Our mission is on the slide, missed the comma. Um, with an emphasis that South Dunedin as a community has had a lot of things done to it in the past. Um, but we wanted to work with people rather than do things to people. So we wanted a lot of community input as part of the project right from the start to help inform what we did and how we do it. Uh, we're very grateful to the partners for all the help in making this happen. And these are those partners. So there's a big list here, um, which you can read. Um, and it was important for us to have a representation from the local runanga. And each of these partners brings expertise and they contribute to the project in a multitude of ways. It's staffed by us at National Library, currently myself and my lovely colleague, Maxine Ramsey, and our newly appointed project coordinator, Alan Silvestro, work on the project as part of our day jobs. But other organisations contribute in lots of ways, and we'll talk about some of those. So South Dunedin has a population of around about 11,000. Um, Dunedin City itself has a population of about 126. Thousand. It's an ethnically, ethnically diverse area with very strong Maori, Pacifica, migrant and refugee communities as part of it. There are a large percentage of children. It's a young population uh, with a high percentage of kids under the age of 15. It's lower income, higher socio and economic hardship on all the indicators. It's flat. Um, it's famous for flooding. Um, in 2015, this house that I'm speaking to you from was. Um, in a festival of what was like a small, a small island floating. Um, it has a lot of older housing stock and it's very prone to cold and damp. Um, and South Dunedin has a really strong identity. Um, South D is um, a, the phrase that's used all the time. And it has recently received funding from a community development fund for millions of dollars, which is another project I'm involved in. Many people in the area rent or live in community housing. And there are a high number of Whenua and Pacifica folks um, in this more represented here than in the wider South uh, in the wider Dunedin community. So our project is supported by research. And since the beginning, Alex Woodley from Point Associates has been alongside us. There are reports on phase one of the project. And again, now we're in phase two, more data is being gathered and more stories are being recorded. So phase one of the project focused on children between the ages of three and seven. And in phase two, we've extended the age range to be for all children up to the age of 12. And you can read these reports on our website um, and we'll give you all the links later. Um, now, so there was research done at the beginning of the project by Methodist Mission Southern. And as a result of that, these personas were created to represent the folks who live in the area. These personas have been extremely useful to us to think about as we've create curated books to go out into the community and as we've created events for them to attend and thought about ways of connecting with locals. As a result of this research, the project initially focused on the children aged three to seven, as I mentioned. South Dunedin has a large number of social services working across the area. It's quite amazing, really. Attending South Dunedin stakeholders meetings was one of the first ways that we connected in with those who work in, that, in the community. And I've lived and worked here for nearly 20 years. And one of my previous school principals told me once that you'll meet everyone in the world in this place. And that is actually true. From those with very little living on the margins, all the way through to some of the most valuable properties in the city. South Dunedin has it all. So our plan was to connect with people and to find ways of connecting and finding homes where families might not have access to books and to provide the most beautiful and pick upable books to share with them and that everybody felt some connection with. So every business and organization where we thought might be a place where families take their kids, we've tried to get books in those places. So we, we created collateral. We used local creatures, the paradise duck, a seal and a shark all animals that you might find around here locally. Most people don't really want to encounter a shark, it's fair to say. Um, we developed stickers to go on the books, logos and messages. We designed bookmarks with spaces for names, which were long enough. Often kids have to squeeze their name into a tiny space. The messaging was all around the book being theirs to keep or to share. We used, oh, whoops, sorry. We used a local designer who created wonderful cultural designs which had meaning to locals. 
And over time, we've had things like a bus bag, which patootled around Dunedin with Reed Chair Grow in it. All the shops on the main street in South Dunedin have had our gorgeous posters in their windows, books on display in their shops, and offices and supplies of bookmarks to share. There are posters in school, early childhood centres, and in your local fish and chip shop and corner store. We've slathered them all over in the hope of getting brand recognition and encouraging people to join together to get behind the project. And here are those creatures. In December 2020, we delivered books to all the schools and early learning centres from Tainui to Concord. We also delivered books to organisations who provide home-based care. And we hope to be able to forge connections on a deeper level so that everyone understands the why of what we're doing and sharing these books. And we, we work on this constantly. As I mentioned earlier, we're keen to emphasize the joy in reading. None of our books are good for you books. They're fun, friendly, and good to look at and share in a wonderful way to engage with a child. We love the idea of homeschool partnerships with reading as a, as a hook. Schools encouraging reading, not just because we all need to know how to do it, but working together to make reading part of every child's world. Children choosing their own books because they like the look of them, just because they like the look of them. And so we want them to appeal. Um, we know that own choice is a great empowerment for a child. Kids then being able to share the book they choose with someone at home who will then talk to them about what's inside. There are eight schools and 23 early, early learning centres in our area. We've had several who to talk to their staff to connect with them over the project and to offer books for their akonga. We've given books for their Christmas events. Our colleague Sue from the Public Library takes books to the to early childhood centres whenever she's on outreach visits. We've had whānau hui for families and schools. We've met with principals to talk about reading and the concept of the project, to offer them professional development and also things like bookshelves for their staff rooms, which are stocked with books to encourage them to try new books for their classroom reading times. We've found it interesting to discover the kinds of readings they already do to encourage their children to read for pleasure. We wanted to support, support that by providing new and exciting books that they might not have seen. Connecting with community leaders for South Dunedin has been really important. Um, on the slide, you can see the wonderful Eleanor Doig. She's the leader of the South Dunedin Community Network, an organisation which has been hugely supportive to our project allowing us to meet, get involved, and talking about the project to all the people in her networks, and most importantly, putting us in touch with them. The, net, the community network has a food truck which sits outside two nights a week. It's called the South Dunedin Bowling Club because you bring a bowl to be filled with their food for a tiny price. They have also been pivotal recently in getting word out for us. People grab a book to share while they get their food in the network rooms. It's pretty awesome. People want to help us out. They want to help distribute books. They want to share the, their, our books with families they know who might not have any books at home. And one of the major organisations we've been working with is WINS. They have given out hundreds of books to, our, to their clients. And so have organisations like the police, who say that when they have to go and do something very unfun with a family, having a book or two to take with them for the for the children is a great way of showing a little bit, bit of kindness when something unpleasant is going down. Kainga Aura staff have our books in the boots of their car to take to the homes of their clients. Plunkett's Family Harm team have been really, really um, good at taking books out to the clients that they work with. There are books in the dental nurses and the community rooms and all the different places around the suburbs. The gym's childcare services, they give out books. The Pacific Trust, Every doctor's surgery, every pharmacy, to Kaika, Arai Te Uru, who provide vast services for families of many, many kinds. They have books with their health navigators, and a lot of these folks work with refugee migrants who are new to Aotearoa. And these are just some examples. There are more than 130 community organisations and businesses sharing our books. And Lollipop Libraries. So this is the one outside my house. It's just really just over there. Um, we do regular rounds stocking these and keeping the books inside them fresh. These are incredibly popular and we hear awesome stories from families who regularly find new cool books in these and they're not always only ours. There are lily pits all over Dunedin and there are a large number in our area and we love supporting this initiative and we also put books into the community pantries as well. 
So we do lots of events. So these photos were taken at a Teddy Bears Hospital event and we were at another one of those last Saturday. Community events like the Street Festival, which is huge, um, are really important for sharing our books. Holiday programs held at Super Grants, supporting summer reading at the libraries. We try to have a presence at any events which happen in South Dunedin. We speak at Community Hui and we take books along to share with the children who come to those with their, with their families. And we talk to parents and grandparents and aunties and uncles about reading and how lovely it is and how it helps children with their vocabulary and speech and how it makes everybody feel good. And here are some of our awesome business people. So the awesome crew from, I'm saying awesome a lot, the fabulous crew from Cash Converters. And then you've got Veronica and Faith from Veggie Boys. Veronica has been known to chase families down the street to give them books. The wonderful Super Grands, Diane from Musselburgh Pharmacy and Sharon from the Secondhand Clothing Shop. These are just a tiny number of people compared to the, the others who've got books. There are so many more. Warren from the Fish and Chip Shop near me who just loves talking to little kids about the books they want to take. The Leckies who run the Butchers and the Four Square at St. Clair and how they just love encouraging their staff to read the books and how they take the books home with them, read them to their grandkids and then swap them for a new one. It's enough to make you go all gooey. And speaking of gooey, we just love it when people at events share books with their kids in front of us and when they send us pictures of their children reading and in this case, to my dog. I thought that this Lianza audience might be keen to hear about how the public library has been involved. And the answer to that is a lot. This is Sue Eichen from the Dunedin Public Library on one of her visits to an early childhood centre, reading stories to the children. Sue has given an enormous amount of support. She will happily take books out on her visits. She's lent a hand with stickering and sorting books. She's our right-hand librarian, to be honest. She and Jackie McMillan have supported us and been part of the team, adding their perspectives to how we do what we do. The South Dunedin Pop-Up Library has been inherently part of our project and our next two events involve their staff and raising awareness of the services that they provide in their very tiny but very good space. And they are important to us. And this is a shout out to Mel and Diane who really do amazing things and have brilliant ideas for activities every day. Um, this is really a photo for attention. Um, so this is to show you some of the gorgeous books that we've given out. You can see the sticker on the front of the books here. And this is a bunch of books that are waiting to be stickered. It's fair to say, we have learned a lot about the books that are available for kids in New Zealand right now. And this project has highlighted that there are areas where there's a huge need for books. Tereo and Pacific language titles is one area. Books with characters who look like Kiwi kids of all kinds. We find that not all books are wonderful to read aloud, even if they do look amazing. Um, we've always known that, right? Um, not every book is a great read aloud. We know that if you're a refugee migrant child, you might never see yourself in a book that's published in New Zealand. That children being able to see themselves on the shelves at school and public libraries would be wonderful. But of course, the books have to be there to buy. We know that there are still people who, despite the vast number of books going out, have not had a book yet. So reaching those people, the hard to reach people, that's about our priority at the moment. And sharing the message that reading is for everyone, that it's a wonderful free thing to do with your tamari, and that ultimately you are affecting the well-being of children and yourself for the better when you share stories with kids. And what's coming up very soon, next week. Um, so we're currently walking, working towards these. We did a book trail last summer, a trail around the Lilliput libraries, then collecting a book and a prize at the South Dunedin Library. And next week, we've got a, a book swap at the Super Grands Family Day. We're planning it being at the Sport Otago pop-up play events. And as well, we have Te Aperito, the reading ambassador, reading ambassador, visiting later this month. He'll be visiting schools and giving public talks, and we're really excited about this. And this is us, and this is where you can find us. So you could follow along with the socials and check out our website, um, which details the kind of things we're up to on a blog and in the activities. It also shares the messages we talk to when we're sharing books with whānau and children. I could uh, talk about this project pretty much 24 hours a day if given the opportunity, but I'm now going to share just a little bit about one of the other Kūtōrito uh, Communities of Readers projects, 
and this is the Canterbury project. So this project is based in Christchurch but reaches out into Kaiapoi and Rangiora. It's focused on children and young people in and on the edge of care. There are a number of partners which include the National Library, the Kingsley School, Oranga Tamariki and the Ministry of Education. Similarly to the other projects, it's about promoting reading for well-being and reading for pleasure. And the project started off in 2021 and is continuing. And here is a, just a little look at some of the things that have been going on. So in the slide, you can see some of the stakeholders meeting um, and examples of the bookcases that they've made. The bookcases and books have been provided to whānau rooms in the, all the Oranga Tamariki centres. And these are rooms where caregivers and children meet with staff or social workers. The books can be chosen and taken home. Social workers also take the books to, to leave in homes when going on home visits, and they're currently working on created, curated collections of books to support mental health and well-being that the social workers can use in their work with Tamariki and Rangatahi. Bookcases and books have gone into family group homes. There are three in Christchurch, as well as other associated child and youth services like Mothers and Babies Mental Health Service and the 298 Youth Hub. This is an awesome project and the feedback is wonderful. And to quote Pete Chaplin, Assistant Principal at the Kingsley School, the young people's response to the books was almost a wee bit of disbelief that these beautiful, engaging books would be there for them to take. It's a really cool project and reaching young people who might not have many books in their lives. The facilitators working on the project love seeing the effect of their work. And now I'm going to hand over to Christy. I'll stop sharing. And I can find my Zoom. I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, and of course, everything has disappeared now because technology hates me today. Uh, give me a full screen. Really give me a full screen. Sorry. Um, there it is over here. I will stop the share. Right, sorry about that. And I'm going to pass over to Chrissy now. Thank you, Bridget. I'm just going to now my this happens, isn't it? Okay, I'll just get my screen going. Radio. Kuretato, ko Chrissy Blair, Toko Wingla, ko Taranaki, te Maunga, ko Kitikiti te Awa, ko Noho Ana, Aho Kite, te Uru Otamaki Makaura. I'm Chrissy Blair and I'm a facilitator looking after the central Auckland area and helping out out west as well, where I also live. And uh, before I came to National Library, I was librarian at, a, um, at an intermediate school out west, and before that, at uh, at a uh, private girls' school, a bit of a contrast there. I also have a background in um, writing, writing about and reviewing children's books. So books are where I live. And uh, my little photo there is a stack of books that has been mounting up from uh, sharing with my granddaughter and looking things up for people in the last couple of weeks. So let's um, I'm going to talk to you about two projects, one with a group of five West Auckland schools and another at Huntley College in the Waikato. So the West Auckland project was with five full primary schools, so years one to eight, that were part of the Kahuiako Otiriwa community of learning, set in an ethnically diverse area with strong Maori Pacific, Pacifica and migrant and refugee communities. Reading achievement was a priority challenge for these schools. A mix of school leaders and library staff representing the schools met with us for a co-design process and used a collaborative self-review do document to assess their needs. Mm. Um, through the co-design process, we decided on the vision of teachers pass on the joy of reading and the mission which encompassed a focus on teachers centered on reading for pleasure and well-being. These are some of the approaches we used to build reading for pleasure and well-being in these school communities. Boosting schools' existing collections, with an abundance of National Library books, providing professional development events where books were celebrated and shared, putting books in staff rooms where they could easily be accessed and enjoyed personally or in the classroom, supporting summer reading and enabling author encounters for staff and students. This photo is from the launch event where we had hundreds of books available to be borrowed, 
You can see the excitement on the face of this teacher with her reading choices stacked in her arms. There were shyer, quieter teachers too who browsed and came to their book choices more slowly. We held three large professional development events which fitted into the Kahui Ako set schedule of after school meetings and welcomed 120 staff and principals. We're indebted to the beautiful Timanawa Public Library for the use of their presentation spaces for these events. Uh, this also paid off for them with increased connection between the schools and the library, with more school visits, more families visiting, and teachers booking in with them. The project launch focused on creating a school reading culture with a presentation about the benefits of reading for pleasure and the elements of a reading community. With a book talk of, select, of a selection of titles, we wished we'd had more copies of those books as everyone wanted to borrow them, such as the power of a good book talk. talk. Then it was open slather for teachers to choose books from the genre tables with National Library staff to talk about the selections. Attendees took away more than 500 books for personal reading and, and their classrooms. At a second event, staff were split into syndicates with workshops focusing on teachers as readers with rich conversations about their own reading identities and what it means to be a reader and ways of sharing this with students. Our services to schools reading team members shared books selected for each level and thus moving from books for themselves to books to share with students. We gave the staff their own Writers in Schools experience at the third event with Melinda Shamanic and David Riley talking about their books, their work in schools, reading for pleasure and practical tips for connecting with students in their reading. I'm sure you all know the power of the author visit. This had a big impact and was followed by visits to the schools by these and other authors in association with Read NZ to Po Muramura. Always there were books to swap, share and discover. A key element was making it social, enabling rich conversations about choice, about helping their own kids as well as their school kids with reading and about their own reading preferences, struggles and loves. We established these movable and budget-friendly staff libraries in each school staff room with encouragement to borrow, read, share and repeat both for their own reading and to take to their classrooms. We filled them with amazing books, then refilled a few weeks later on a regular basis. There were still more book talks to entice and intrigue and encouragement for them to share their reading with others. It was a really successful enterprise and something that we've continued to refresh since the official ending of the project. Every year we encourage schools to enable holiday reading. In fact, we've just launched our latest offer of summer reading loans here. So we're definitely keen to help out with summer reading loans and to support production of this 20 page booklet designed by staff led by Trina Lyle, school librarian from one of the partner schools. They really wanted a print option for their students after the public library program went online. Great news this week is that they have funding to produce booklets for the whole Kahui Ako for summer reading this year from year one to 13, again led by Trina who's now moved from her role as a librarian in one of the primary schools to the local high school, also part of that Kahui Ako. Part of any action research is gathering evidence of impact. A survey was completed by 48 staff. We did offer a prize that was a bit more than a chocolate fish and may have been book related. The majority of staff believed their knowledge of children's literature had increased, with over a third saying that it had increased a lot. As you can see here, there was a shift in their own reading and exploring of books and their own enjoyment. We also saw increases in student reading engagement with one of the most significant factors identified by staff as access to the reading resources. One of the brilliant bits was being able to help with small in-school initiatives using books in a targeted way we heard about a high needs class of students in one of the schools and asked what they were interested in, then sent them a curated loan of superhero, well-being, and animal books and heard back from the teacher that her students were spellbound and engaged by the books. We provided a class of year seven and eight students with a massive classroom library loan delivered with some bonus book talks. And it was thrilling to see these students fall upon them, competing for popular titles, then settling to read, and later hearing what, bit, what a big change this had made for the class reading culture and abilities. These are the stories that we love. Let's head down country now to one of the first communities of readers projects at Huntley College in the Waikato. I had a special interest in this school as I went there for my first three years of secondary school, and yes, I was a school librarian. 
The vision for this project sounds simple, but in practice, of course, is not simple at all. For Huntley College to become associated with reading. The school had been struggling when a new senior management team came to the school in 2018. They saw reading as a critical element to improve students' outcomes. They began to use the phrase, Huntley is the school for leaders and leaders are readers. They needed teachers to read because the teachers at that point were still saying, don't worry about it, nobody reads. Teachers needed to become readers themselves to be able to recommend books to the kids, no matter what their specialist subject, and to make reading stories part of their tutorial program. Staff professional development was a key component here and several sessions were run to help build enthusiasm and knowledge. Early on, staff were surveyed about their interests and books were specially selected for each individual by our librarians. Workshops were led by National Library specialists and facilitators on topics like strategies for encouraging reading, being a reading role model, helping students choose books to read for pleasure, and exploring books and book chat. There was always a book talk component and the sessions came with boxes of books for reading and sharing. This photo is from the day I shared our Book and Beyond tool for exploring books in depth, which you can find templates and exemplars for on our website. We used a big stack of sophisticated and non-fiction picture books to help teachers see how they could use these as great kicking off points for their I am teaching modules, which were used as a strategy for teaching curricular elements across all levels in the school. They would be taught about the knowledge and skills required to achieve success in their chosen option and meet people who are successful in those areas, which included career options like, I am a photographer, a personal trainer, a builder, a statistician, a storyteller. If you could hear a backing track to the photo, you'd hear the loud buzz of conversation as they poured over the books that they had chosen. The books on the right were selected for the I am a reggae historian module. Teachers often had no idea that there would be books to suit their area of interest and went away well armed to share with their students. It's so great when you can find statistics to back anecdotal evidence. And here we see a clear path of improvement for Huntley's library. The library had had no resourcing for about 15 years and had dismal usage st statistics. In early 2019, only 1.5% 1 of students had borrowed a book from the library. After a ministry funding boost to buy books, uh, which made the library and its contents look modern and attractive, along with a lot of effort from the leadership team to promote reading, it was up to 21% by the mid-2019. Numbers doubled and took a leap up to 48% after the first Community of Readers event at the school, a speed data genre. The speed date brought a huge reading buzz to Huntley. National Library facilitators and librarians hosted tables of books from a variety of genres specially selected for the event as groups of students moved around the room and were able to take whatever books they liked. I remember at the beginning of the day, we had everything set up having no idea if students would even come. As you can see from the images, it was a raging success. We did have the added tempter of lollies on the tables, but the sight of students and staff clutching stacks of books and discussing and recommending books to one another is evidence of the success of the event. Afterwards, we had a staff member come back to speak to us who described how she'd expected her class to want to move on to their next activity, but all the students wanted was to sit and explore their books. It was also significant that all staff were welcome to take books not just the teachers, office staff, caretaker, teacher aides and cleaners, all were welcome and they came and they took books. A student researcher recruited to work with those from AUT commented that providing high quality books that looked new and had been specifically chosen with her fellow students in mind was likely to make her peers feel a sense of connection with the books. Students' interests were noted and consequently the librarian request, requested books in the popular genres from National Library's lending service to add to their library collection to meet the increased demand. The library is also visibly important on the school's website, given primary real estate at the top of the homepage and featuring as one of the four main things to find out about the school, our students, our people, our story and our library. Its new name and philosophy are also clear and let everyone know that this is a welcoming and, and exciting place to be. National Library's local facilitator worked and continues to work with the library team to develop an action plan based on their reading culture review, which identified access as a key element to address 
The library needed a system upgrade and the online presence had been lost, so a huge amount of work has been put into its redevelopment, including student input on overall design. It's full to the brim with useful links and tools to support both reading and research. The culmination of this Community of Readers project to Huntley was their story festival in the Melting Pot Cultural Evening. This two-day festival featured books for students, staff and whanau to take home and keep, which were on display throughout the festival. The picture here is of students choosing books from, um, from those on display. Um, and it included, included being on display for the evening event, which was packed with the whanau members of all ages, and we had books for all of those ages. Community, community of Readers and Read NZ uh, supported author visits for the Story Festival, which linked with several of the IAM modules. Visiting authors included David Riley, the reading warrior, talking about powerful reasons to read, that reading makes us clever. David has been issuing his book a week challenge on all his school visits, and I was delighted to hear that some students had started their own book clubs to talk about their reading. A recommendation really is the best way to discover something new to read. The young man in the photo came to see David afterwards to ask for a copy of Stephen Adams' training routine as he wants to be a champion basketball player too and needed a plan. Tiafri Rito, our reading ambassador, Ben Brown, shared his poetry and stories from his own life and experiences and the harsh but true stories of his re recent work with Oranga Tamariki residents. Zach Wiper spoke and shared his artwork with the aspiring anime artists, followed by a drawing workshop and Ken Arkine from Action Education led a high participation poetry workshop that had students scribbling out their sometimes very personal responses and then reading their work aloud. A parent later told the DP that their daughter had come home from the event and started writing her own poetry and hasn't stopped. It's not only students who have been impacted by the project. These are teacher comments. I love the idea of doing reading. These projects have all been the subject of in-depth academic research, and you can find out much more by reading the reports, watching videos, and seeing the other resources, including our reading frameworks, on our webpage. We'll put the link into the chat. Thank you, Emma. Before we stop with some questions and discussion, I thought you'd like to hear from Tien, one of the Huntley College students. This is from the community um, stories online at the Hear Me, See Me website. And um, which is an Oranga Tamariki campaign designed to share the challenges young people have faced growing up in Aotearoa and what helped or could have. Huntley College featured in an article called Champions of Reading, which includes some of the results of the work we did with them during the, the core project. Here's a glimpse of just one of the students talking about his reading life. I encourage you to go to the Hear Me, See Me website and see the other videos and listen to the podcast where they talk about the impact of the writers and poets who visited the school. And I'll just change my screen so that you can listen to Tien talk about his. Over my like um, junior years in primary school, I guess um, I wasn't the best reader and I wasn't the most confident. And that's kind of why I shied away from it a lot. And, um, you know, I started to grow older and um, I, well, you know, I met some good friends along the way and um, I guess I always felt left out when, you know, they were quite confident readers and stuff. So um, I thought I'll pick up a book one day, started reading. And... Sorry about the draggy. <laughs> you know, I started losing track of time. Next thing I know, I was through three or four books. I was like chatting away with my friends about them. Yeah, I think I owe it to reading where I am today. You know, I've read a bit about um, Greek Greek myths and legends. I quite like that because uh, I grew up playing like the God of War games and stuff like that. And I think that's what got me into like um, the myths and legends book. That was one of the first books I picked up. In some myths and legends, um, they talk about how the world was created and stuff. And like, you know, I'm I'm not particularly religious or anything, um, but I just like learning about that stuff. 
as a kid, I was quite dramatic growing up. You know, um, I was more because um, when I lived with my grandparents, you know, I wasn't around like um, other kids so often. I love poetry. I love Shakespeare. I love music. And uh, one of my teachers had read a few lines from Shakespeare, and I was like, yeah, that's cool. You know, I was, I was like 10 or something. I was like, yeah, that's, that's, that's so cool. And um, I still listen to Shakespeare now um, from time to time. It can just be soothing. Um, recently, because I always get tied up doing other stuff like um, schoolwork, uh, all my assessments and whatnot, uh, I find myself reading less. But it was a good opportunity to, you know, get into audio books. So um, I think my first audio book was Unbroken. And it was Semperini, because I, I quite like history as well. Oh, over lockdown, I find myself just reading a lot. And um, with everything going on in the world, because, you know, a lot of us had predicted the world going into, like, you know, apocalyptic land, wastelands or something like that, you know. Um, I kind of used reading as an escape to escape society even more, to, like, isolate from my self-isolation. But it, yeah. Okay. So that's my lot. So um, now we're ready and able. If anybody's got any questions and things they'd like to discuss about the projects, then you'd like to know. So if you, if you do have a question, either just put your put your video on and wave your hand, or put it into the chat. Um, I've got lots of questions. I'm, I'm waiting patiently. <laughs> Anybody would like to unmute themselves and ask a question? I just wanted to say it's so wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing the links. It, um, uh, it's really wonderful to, to read about it, but just so special to hear you both talk about it. It really has brought it to life for me. And I'm just like, wow, this is even more amazing than I had had, had uh, th thought that it was. And my question was, um, you know, obviously these were, were pilot programs. Has there been any thought given to how these kinds of things could be, um, you know, Obviously, a lot of funding has gone into it in terms of, you know, providing free books and the different kinds of scenarios that you've described. Is there any thought to how this could happen on a, on a wider scale? Chrissy, you or me? You, I think. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I think there is the possibility of more of these projects um, in the wind. Um, and... Uh, and different kinds of communities would need different kinds of, of support. I mean, and, if you're, and what we tried to do was show you the difference between the various kinds of projects from the really enormous to, to small and discreet. Um, but I, I mean, it wouldn't it be wonderful if other people started this idea and took it and embraced it in their own communities. I just think that's great. And I don't know that you just necessarily need enormous amounts of funding to make a big difference. And I think, you know, it's possible to use what you have to encourage people to, to you know, work within an organisation like a school or an early childhood centre or to, or to take it wider because, you know, every organisation has tentacles that reach out into the world. Um, there probably will be more of these funded projects, um, uh, but I, I, I don't know what they are yet. Um, but it's such a nice thing to to feel that the organizations that that everybody loves reading there's not been any time when we've given out books on my project at all where people have gone no thanks oh I think we've had two people say no thanks not for me out of all the books we've given out just two people and so I think um and one business on the main street of South Dunedin and another one in another part of town have said, no, thanks, we don't want any books. But every single other person has wanted them. And so for me, what that says is that people value reading and people value books. And when they see them, they think, yes, this is, this is something I can get behind. So yeah, I think there's opportunities 
and while yeah lots of money but also possibilities for other to work in other ways as well that's right yeah not and and not all of the projects um have been expensive to run some of them have you know have operated you know the west auckland project was operated mainly just on you using the national library collection you know and every every school in new zealand is able to access books from us so you know it's a it's a great resource set that people could make the most of if they wanted to um get a boost in their libraries and it and I mean, the secret is, is that it's all about community. So it's looking at your local community and seeing how you can connect with the people who are there and what resources you have in your local community. Because it's been, like in Dunedin, it's those 150 plus organisations all working together that's really made it work. Also, if, if you go and read the research, you might find little tender you know, there might be ideas that are sparked by reading those reports there's lots of great ideas in those uh, I've got a question Vicky from Central Otago here the, okay. the projects <laughs> thank you Bridget for making sure I came <laughs> the projects that you guys have all talked about have been seem to be primarily focusing around children is there any um, has there been any projects particularly targeting adults not yet. Yeah, not, yeah, not so much. And probably the main reason for that is because um, we are the services to schools <laughs> part of National Library. So, um, but we, um, you know, as part of what we're doing, we've very much been looking at um, at growing the teachers in those schools as well. It's not just about the books for the students, but about but about really developing those teachers as readers, and also um, you know links with the with the public library and a lot of um, some of the people who were coming along to our events out west. Um, they consequently discovered what a great joy they could find at the Timanawa Public Library. And so they started they started going there much more and interacting with their public library. So it does just spread out. You start in the schools, but it spreads out to their whanau and, and further. And once you get those books in the house and other people come and they see them and you share the books, you're sharing the joy of the reading and the glory of the books, and it just is contagious. Um, there's a question that Marion Reid has asked in the chat. Um, we're keen to know about any partnerships with public libraries and what the opportunities for public libraries would be. So our project is definitely, I can see Sue there. Um, our project is definitely a, a partnership with the public library. Um, to the, the name public library and they've been fantastic to us they've given us so much support from storing the books that we have and providing us a space to work but also in getting the word out using their networks um, of, of um, becoming really inherently part of the fabric of the project it's not just us doing this this is a this is a partnership project every is in this together and so the networks that the public libraries have are quite different to the networks that that we have um, so we can do schools um, and but but they have outreach to all kinds of other places of community groups and other and and into the early childhood centers and things like that so so it's really really part of our project for sure um chrissy you know more about the other ones yeah so um out out west i think um being able to have our event where all of the schools could come together um at timanawa which you know is a lovely new library and they've got um they've got a great auditorium upstairs that we could use and I think uh, that was really um, key because it was neutral territory for all of those um, for all of those teachers to come to and you know it was a lovely place to be we always made sure that we had food so if you're running an event like this you must have food food is essential um, and you know and we also had like activities for um, for the children of the um, if people had brought their kids along, so while they were doing their thing, there were activities for the for the kids. But the the librarians at Te Manawa were hugely supportive of us, and also you know gave out gave out their own resources um, to the teachers so that they could follow up. And they've had um, much more engagement with being invited into schools or schools coming to visit them at the public library. And they um, you know they always 
they visit a lot of those local schools as a as a result of um, of everybody combining forces. You know, the public library is a is a really big part of the librarian community out there, and I'm sure that is the case in a lot of other parts of the country. I'm sure a lot of you have some really valuable connections with the schools in your in your areas, and um, you know, and could maybe look at some of the things that we've done and think of ways that you might connect more or invite them into your spaces to um, increase that connection. Also, it's also quite, this has been great for raising awareness of what we do and us learning about what public libraries do and the reach that public libraries have and the various ways that they go about um, connecting with communities. I've, it's, it, we've actually learned a lot about each other Does anybody else have something that they would like to ask? I was wondering how, you know, without wanting to focus on the on, on the fact that there were many free books given out, I, I was sort of wondering whether it was the fact that people were surprised that they could take them away and that sort of was unusual, like to have this beautiful thing, but was, was it the fact that they could take it or was it also the fact that someone had chosen it for them? You know, that sort of, that feeling well for us it's quite interesting to see how this works culturally as well because not all families are comfortable with taking something for free uh, it feels like there must be a hook attached to it there must be something good for you about this and that's one of the things that we've found when we've been doing events with Reach Here Grow anyway is that there can be a little bit of a hesitancy in that people, parents would encourage their children to come and look, but then get quite shy about the fact that they could could just take it away. And so we we you know we we go really hard on enthusiasm to try and 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 break down those barriers and and to encourage the children. And and it's when they when the kids walk away clutching the book, that's just the best thing. But but for and and we've. Uh, had some discussions with some Pacifica families just just recently actually and they've said that for some taking books from Lilliput libraries is actually quite tricky for them because they don't they they really love them and they'd love to take them but they don't know that that's the right thing to do and so so then it's something about the messaging that we have to work on to encourage people to take yeah. them so yeah, I, I'm not, I, I think there's a little bit of work to do there, but yes, that is definitely a thing that people are surprised that you mean we can keep this. So it's yeah, it's an interesting little little thing. I don't know what kind of thing it is, but it's a thing. Yeah, and I and I must say that even um, you know, in, in the projects that um, like in West Auckland, that didn't involve giving away books. It involved using our national library books, and um, so far as I'm concerned, there was just as much joy in being able to find a book that was on the table that you really wanted to read and be able to take it away and read it, having having chosen the book that you that you really wanted. And like for that um, for that class of year seven and eight kids who we took. A big lot, a big classroom library into their into their um, school. You know, they had that until the end of the year, and then it came back, and we and we would send some more. But they were, you know, they were accessing books that they that they'd never set their eyes on or or dreamed of reading, and discovered, you know, all sorts of worlds that they would never have encountered otherwise. And and that was books from the library, you know. That's a great comment. Um, yeah, that's a great comment. Forward somehow is um, yeah, it's a that's an excellent concept, and and that's where the Lilliput libraries end up. Um, out west, one of the librarians from the West Auckland group, she runs um, some pop up libraries out west that you can see all over the place that are um, that are recycled refrigerators that have been painted with the branding and stuff, and they're absolutely perfect for keeping books in because they have sealing doors and um, and they hold a whole lot of books. So. Uh, we do have, you know, these books always going round and round the circuit um, through those through those pop up libraries too.
Well, it really looks like there's a wealth of, of things for people to go away if we haven't done much reading about it and want to know more. Thanks so much for sharing the links in the in the chat. And um, oh yes, um, yes. Emma's, Emma's just um, uh, so Emma and I were the facilitators who mostly worked out west, though um, though we we're um, assisted by many others on the team. Um, we did so we did a book talking session of verse novels to some year seven and eight um, students as well at a, at another school, um, sort of looking at it as like a gateway, the gateway drug between reading graphic novels only through to being able to, to read um, a novel. And we took we took these books out there. I think we took like 35 verse novels and talked about them all. And by the end of that week, there were four book, four of those books were left. All of the others had been issued. And um, you know, it's just, yeah, it's fabulous to see how they engage when they're given the chance and given a bit of information about the books along the way. So I was wondering whether you would like to share something about your experience in Dunedin, since you've been so involved with the communities of readers. Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> You're muted, my. No, now she's. Oops. She's disappeared. Help. Muted again. <laughs> yeah. Here I am. I can't get. Uh, I'm. I'm uh, blah, 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 blah. We can hear you. You can hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, I'm um, using my phone. I tried to come in on my laptop and and the council said that it was an unsafe site and they blocked it. So I had to get my phone out and do it there. So um, oh, it's been a wonderful experience and it's been a wonderful experience with the library. And as Bridget said, it's um, we've always been aware of each other and we've had good collaborations between National Library and and Dunedin Public Libraries always, but we have a much richer understanding and it's actually it's actually really a good way to maximise um, our efforts. And I was just sort of thinking when Bridget talked about the hesitancy of some families taking the books away to take and that, that thing of a child taking a book and hugging it and walking it away. Um, I was just thinking of particularly one event where we, um, the South Dunedin Festival. So that's a whole day where the, um, the, the main street of South Dunedin is, is um, effectively becomes a festival site. There's no traffic and um, and we had a, a huge number of books and been lots of families coming around. And at the end of the day, we felt a bit like, do you want a book? Do you want another book? You know, it was a bit like we were, you know, pushing something illicit, but it was lovely. and. And the, um, what was actually really moving was to watch the ch children going through and actually selecting a book. And the reason a child may choose a book is so different from what an, an adult might um, have chosen. And we actually had sometimes you could see the parent trying to guide them towards a particular book and the child shaking their head and actually very adamantly clutching the book that they had chosen for whatever reason. Um, and it was, it's been great to, to work. Um, I think it's um, enhanced um, the public library's visibility in the South Dunedin area. Um, and, you know, particularly our little South Dunedin library, which was meant to be in a pop-up, but um, has now been there for five years because they're going through a process of rebuilding a library and community hub in South Dunedin, but um, waiting for the, the final lease in the building that's going to be demolished <laughs> to build the, this new um, facility to for that lease to be sort of come to its end. And um, so having this project has actually really helped boost the visibility of the South Dunedin library and the um, little team of Diane and Mal have actually just embraced anything to do with Red Share Grow and will run with it and go with it and um, no I think it's been a it's just been a very valuable experience for Dunedin Public Libraries to be part of because 
we're as a public to... library, the you know, it's, it's who we are here for, and to um, provide appropriate resources for all the community, it's very hard. And this project has helped us see where we have gaps and also help us um, connect with aspects of community that we perhaps have struggled to be able to connect to with before. So it's been oh, a win-win. Wonderful. Yeah. Sounds great. So um, Bridget and Chrissy, did you have any other last comments you wanted to before we close for today? Um, I guess our facilitators are always really happy to come and talk to public library people as we travel around the country. I met Vicky just last week. Um, so it's, you know, we're really happy to talk about what we're doing and how we're doing it. And we run network meetings that um, public library staff are very welcome to come along to and um, connect with the schools that come along. But um, I would I would suggest that if you get offered the opportunity to do a community as a readers project that you um, embrace it because it is super fun and you'll meet fabulous people. And um, my, I don't, I don't, I don't have much else to say except that I, I always say that it's just, it's about the glory of the books, and that's what that's what draws people in. Whether it's um, a free book that you get to keep or something that you get to choose yourself from the library, um, we just want to get the word out there and, and you know, get more and more people being able to enjoy the pleasure of reading and what it can bring to your life. Oh. Very nice words to end on. So thank you everybody for attending and thank you so much, Chrissy and Bridget. You've brought such enthusiasm for the project. I'm sure that many people will be going off to delve a bit more into the all the wonderful resources that you've um, been published out of out of all of the programs. Um, yes, it's just very inspiring and I think something quite new for New Zealand. Nothing like this, quite like this has ever really happened before. So it's, it's so great to have some real New Zealand, some New Zealand research. Yes, um, happening there instead of just reading research from overseas. Absolutely. You know, about us. Yeah, that's that's a very good point. So thank you, thank you very much, everyone. And I'll just finish with a cut of care, and then you'll go away and get on with your your day. And um, hope the snow's melted wherever it was, and all those sorts of things. <laughs> it's been an unusual unusual couple of days with the weather. So um, thank you. Una here, una here, una here. Ki te uru tapanui, ki a wātea, ki a māma, te nāko, te tīnana, te wairua, i te ara takatā. Koe rā i rongo, whakaeria aki ki ronga, ki a tīna, tīna, huie, hai ki e. Thank you everybody.